It, I'm delighted. Hello. I'm delighted to be joined on the line now by the one and only Tara Reed. And Tara, it's a busy period for you, the start of 2018. You've numerous film projects in the works to be released this year. Titles such as Bleach, Waking Up His Wife, and many more set to hit our cinema screens in 2018. It's really exciting times in the world of Tara Reed these days. Yeah, it's been great. Um, last year was amazing. We did a lot of, uh, tons of movies that will be out this year. And um, so far we're doing four different kind of movies that we'll be shooting this year. So it's just been, you know, um, just a whirlwind and it's been incredible. We're actually already going to start doing Sharknado 6, which is crazy, but, you know, so that's, that's going to be fun. So it's, yeah, it's just an exciting time in my life. And, uh, just came back from a great trip, um, on vacation. We went to Africa on a safari, oh. then we went to Playa, then we went to, uh, Tulum in, uh, Mexico. So, you know, it's just been a great end of the year, a great beginning of the year. It does look great. Yeah, and Tara, I believe the journey began for you at the tender age of six years old in a game show called Child's Play. And as a teenager, you made an appearance in Saved by the Bell, the new class. So you're really cast into that industry from a very young age growing up in it. And who were maybe those uh, people, those role models that helped you and guide you, guided you along the way? And where did this love of acting begin from? Were you naturally born? Were you as a child, maybe a tree four? Were you always that performer that you just wanted to be in front of people? Well, it all started when I was younger. Um, it was kind of all, we never like tried to be an actor. When I was younger, we were, um, me and my mom and my brother were at the mall in um, the food court. And my mom was getting us pizza. And me and my brother were at the table. And we were, you know, being a little... Yeah. Like, Chasing each other on the table, like standing on the table, like na 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 na, and, and this ch and this child manager um, from New York City happened to be there visiting her daughter. Wow! And she saw like my personality, and there was a movie being cast. It was a Stephen King movie, and they couldn't find the girl. So she went up to my mom. She's like, you know, please, like I have a perfect role for your daughter. My mom's like, we don't ask, but like, she she would have no idea what she's doing. She said, please, just, just please, just meet with the director. Um, and his name was Larry Cohen. So my mom asked me, I was like, okay. And we went in and had the audition, and then he went right outside, and uh, he told my mom we got the part. And then from there, it kind of started. So it was all kind of an accident, but it definitely worked out. Yeah, and Tara, you grew up in New Jersey and you sort of made the move then, the transition, you decided to move to Hollywood to pursue to pursue the movie to career, to go away from the sort of TV series. And I just asked you, in relation to that transition, it came very, very quick from the time you moved to Hollywood in 1997. You were cast straight away in the big uh, Lebowski, which was released in 1998. And you went on in 1998 to feature in two other smash hits, Cruel Intentions and an urban legend. Was there ever a worry or fear or that young making that move away from home from New Jersey all the way across to the West Coast to Hollywood to pursue that career that maybe that there might be a time or a period that you might have to wait or sit it out or have rejections before you got that big break because it seemed that you were only in Hollywood for a little while before things started to roll very quick for you along the ladder. Yeah, I mean, I got lucky. I moved to Hollywood, and the first role I got was um, Saved by the Bell. Then I got another, uh, the same producer. It was another uh, TV show called uh, California Dreams. And then I did a soap opera called Days of Our Lives. And then from the soap opera, I got um, The Big Lebowski. And then from The Big Lebowski, I think it was a movie called Girl, then Around the Fire, then Urban Legend, then American Pie, then... Um, to see the Pussycats and America by Two, then um, then Wilder, then uh, then I don't even know. I just kept going on yeah. and on and on. It was pretty crazy. And uh, 
Tara, if that brings us on to the monster franchise that is American Pie, and how did the opportunity arise for you to be cast as Vicky Latham in the American Pie series? And what was it like maybe to work with the likes of Eugene Levy? Was he maybe a further figure to you all in cast? And was any sort of tips or pointers or t- that he shared with you that maybe helped uh, shape your career? Or was he a great sort of figure to work off? And did you realise from the start when you saw the script from for American Pie that you were on to a winner here? Uh, no, I, I was sitting with Urban Migrant in um, Canada and I had to go in for um, the final callbacks. So I had to fly in and fly right back and then I auditioned for it. Then when I went back to Canada, I found out I got the part. So, you know, that was pretty exciting. Mm. And then Eugene Levy is just the nicest guy in the whole world, but I had no scenes with him, just Jason did. Yeah. Well, I didn't get to know him on, on, in that way, but just, you know, meeting him on the set, he was just so cool and so much fun. And he's just a great guy, great actor, tremendous person, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that brings us on, Tara, into the cult phenomenon that is what we call Sharknado, another franchise with a global following, a plot that involves carnivorous sharks killing people in tornadoes. Uh, seems a bit surreal, but it certainly has worked, leading to five movies on the trot. And Tara, how would you describe Sharknado in your own words? And why do you think such a crazy plot like that has become such a global success? Because I think Sharknado, I mean, obviously it doesn't take itself serious. Mm. And it's also like serious things that are going on in the world. I think it really allowed people to escape watching something so bad that it's stupid, so bad that it's good. That, you know, it made people get out of their bubble and like laugh. And, yeah. and you know, it's just, it's absurd. And the thoughts of a, a shark flying in a tornado, you know, attacking yeah. the world is, you know, absolutely ridiculous. I think the worst, you know, it got it got funnier, and mm. then it became a cult hit, and people like have Sharknado parties because it's a fun film. It's a fun mm. film. It's entertaining, and you know, and obviously, you know, if it, it didn't do so well, we, we wouldn't keep making all, all these films. Yeah. But like, we don't just make them; we make them for the people. And it's not just a film that comes out in America. You know, it comes out in two hundred and sixty-three countries. Yeah. So it's it's much bigger than than a lot of movies because it comes out the same exact time, mm. you know, so everyone gets to enjoy it, the time at the same time, all over the country, it might come out at 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes, you know, in some countries, yeah. and people, you know, stay up to watch it, mm. and, you know, the result of it has been incredible. Yeah, and Tara, you were also part of the comedy hospital hit TV series Scrubs, where you played Danny Sullivan, and that seemed like a fun project to be involved in with a great cast. And is Scrubs a show on a time in your life that you have fond memories of being on set? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, working with Zach Braff, and I actually went to high school with Donald Faison in real life. Mm. Um, right. I don't know, everyone's just... It was a, you know, it was the first time, like, I really did television, television. Mm. But they shot the movie with the cameras. They shot it as a film. Right. And, you know, it's always kind of weird to be the new girl in, in the class. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We work together. But they were so kind. And I love my character, Danny. She was really fun and funny. And, you know, I just I had a great time doing the role with them. And I had a great time shooting stars. Yeah, and in Tara, in the last decade, you've ventured behind the camera on multiple projects, and is producing and directing a real passion of yours now in the last decade or so, that it's something that you have really, really got behind and something that you seem really keen on? Well, I, mean, I haven't directed yet, but producing, you know, I've produced a bunch of movies. It's a different world, because instead of us coming in there as, you know, the artist and Knowing your line and, and, and creating, you know, what we create, it, it was different because, you know, you have a voice and putting the whole package together. Yeah. You know, where you're picking the casting, you're picking locations, you're okaying everything. So it's a whole different view of the business. And it's really, you know, I think important in life to understand how everyone's position it. Mm. You know, from, you know, being the cameraman up to the lighting up to this. So you really learn how to film completely it's a 360 of, of how it's done I think that's important yeah, and Tara, as we know, we have you have some Irish ancestry in you and can you provide us about some of your Irish heritage and have you ever been to Ireland? Yeah, 
I've been to Ireland. I'm actually friends with Jedward. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah, they're really fun guys. Um, yeah, I've been all over Ireland. All over. Um, my ancestors are from Dublin. Oh, but right. I've been everywhere pretty much around Ireland. It's I I I've heard I uh, went to I forget what the name of it, but the first like oldest bar there, and uh, they let me go behind the bar and and pour a Guinness. <laughs> That's cool. And when was the last time you were in Ireland, Tara? Probably about five years ago. All right. And Tara, just for all those Irish uh, viewers and listeners uh, that have followed your career down through the years, uh, maybe seeing you grow up in our screens in relation to Saved by the Bell, then onto the American Pie, and what do you think, uh, if you were to say to them, what do you think the future holds for Tara Reid now in the next coming years? And how would Tara Reid like to be remembered in a decade or two t- time? And if someone said, uh, put Tara Reid in a dictionary and said two sentences underneath her name, what would you like those two sentences to read, Tara? Um, if I had to do two words, it would be probably iconic. Yeah. And and talented. All right. Tara Reid, before we let you go, we're running a celebrity quiz. We have of, of over 50 celebrities running it. It's 10 simple questions. How well do you know Ireland? I have a funny feeling you're going to do well in this quiz, given your Irish ancestry and given um, all the times that you've been to Ireland. Our current I'm leader... Really bad at games. <laughs> I'm terrible at games. <laughs> no, it's quite simple. Our current leader is Robert Davy who, as, as you know, he's, he's on 9 from 10. We've had over 50 celebrities on the show scoring from 2 to 3. Do you want to give it a go? Sure. Okay. I want to be so bad at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Tara Reid, first question. You're a celebrity. How well do you know Ireland? First question. Can you name any colour in the Irish flag? Um, I think it's green. Correct. Yellow and orange. Yeah, green, green, yep, yeah, that's all we need, one from one. Question number two, can you name any county in Ireland? Um, Dublin. Correct, two from two. Question number three, March the 17th is known worldwide as what day? Am I question March the 17th is known worldwide as what day? Oh, um, uh... Irish Day. It's uh, St. Patrick's Day. Correct. Three from three. Question number four. Which of these is a famous Irish tourist attraction? Is it A. The Cliffs of Moher, B. Brandenburg Gate or C. Eistermount Castle? The Cliffs of Moher. Cliffs of Moher. Yep. Correct. Four from four. Question number five. Which of these is a famous Irish river? Is it the River Shannon? The River Rhine or the River Lech? The River Wreck. No, the River Wreck is in Holland. It's actually the River Shannon. Question number six. <laughs> question number six. Can you name any Irish sports star? And I'll give you a hint. This guy was all over American news last year. He fought Fly Mayweather in this big public event. No, he's a he's a soccer player. He's a soccer player. I do guys call it a football player, but it's he's a soccer player. I can't think of his name, but he's a, like a huge soccer player. All right, we'll have to move on, Is Tara. Right? The the okay. the boxer was actually Conor McGregor, but you could have had a, a few yeah, more. Yeah, I knew that. It's kind of, and it, oh, I thought you said a soccer player. No, and no, any. I know Conor McGregor was a boxer. Okay, we'll give you that one. So, Tara, Tara. Question number seven. Can you name any, can you name the famous alcoholic beer founded in Ireland? And you've already mentioned it so far in the interview. Guinness. Correct. Yeah, Guinness. And question number eight, Tara. Ireland was once occupied by what country? And it's our neighbours. England. Correct. Question number nine, Tara. Which plant or shrub is the national symbol of Ireland? Um, uh, hold on, I know this, uh, uh, it's Shamrock. Correct, correct, Tara. Last question, Tara. 
Can you name any famous Irish musician or actor? Ah, uh, you too. Correct. Tara Reid in our celebrity quiz, how well do you know Ireland? You scored 9 out of 10. And Tara, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you not to, to, to you today, okay? We wish you all the best in your future endeavours. And Tara Reid, before we let you go, is there anything you want to say? I love Ireland. <laughs> Tara, pleasure talking to you and we wish you all the best. Good luck. Thank you. Take care. Take care.